Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday afternoon, 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Daniel Cuellar, and today we will be discussing the utter hypocrisy of the assertion, quote, I am free, I have all the licenses and permits to prove it, from my blog post by the same name. This is the blog post. Are you a slave? Of course not. You can speed if you want, do drugs if you want, hire someone for less than minimum wage if you want, buy something without paying sales tax if you want, not file your federal income tax return if you want, and walk into Mexico without any ID if you want, right? Of course not. This is because all these victimless crimes are against man-made arbitrary mandates known as laws. If you do any of these harmless actions, they will be, you will be slapped with an arbitrary fine. If you refuse to pay that fine, people in costumes will show up at your door and arrest you. If you resist arrest, these people in costumes, they may harm you or kill you. Does this sound like the life of a slave or a free person? I will ask you again, are you a slave? Now I... I can concede that, that perhaps there may be many layers to that answer. One may argue that since the life of a black man in the early 1800s is very different from that of a black man today, that must constitute the genuine improvement in the freedoms of the average black American. However, one may also argue that the life of a white non-slave owner in the early 1800s is very different from that of a white man today, and that must constitute the genuine deterioration in the freedoms of the average white American. Putting aside these confusing historical comparisons, there are certain objective conclusions we can draw from this. Uh, the larger the government, the more oppressed the individual. The more man-made laws are created, the less individual freedom is respected. The larger the collective, the more likely insanity will be engendered. Lynch moms are not exactly reasonable or compassionate entities. There is no such thing as public opinion, the collective, or the group. Only the individual thinks, only the individual reasons, only the individual loves. Recognize no authority over your life but your own. And I end with two quotes. Uh, first one is by Bob Marley, famous uh, reggae singer. Better to die fighting for freedom than be a prisoner all the days of your life. And the other one is by Robert A. Heinlein. I am free no matter what rules surround me. If I find them intolerable, if I find them tolerable, sorry, I tolerate them. If I find them too obnoxious, I break them. I am free because I know that I alone am morally responsible for everything I do. Okay, so the question is, are you a slave? Now, the word slave can bring up some pretty uh, vivid imageries of uh, people in chains, people in shackles, um, the images that we think about um, in our history books uh, that, that, we, that we have read about in been taught in our history books. Um, however, there's many definitions to what a slave may be. Now, um, chain slavery is one aspect, or also known as chattel slavery, um, which is the physical ownership of another, of another person's entire body, labor, blood, sweat, um, the fruits of their labor, right? So, so that would be 100% chain slavery. Uh, but what can be argued, and what will be argued in this video, is that today we Americans do still suffer under some degree of slavery. I would say it is um, quite, um, quite close to, <laughs> if not, it's, it's not exactly the same, but it is quite close. Um, if you think of the, um, the number of laws in this country, the, the, you know, the, 
the size of the tax code, the number of regulations, the number of people incarcerated for victimless crimes, um, you know, the uh, surveillance state, the police state, the th different things like that, you begin to get the idea of uh, not the freedom, but the lack of freedom that we, uh, that we en endure. Uh, so, so yeah, so, so chain slavery um, <clears throat> started in this country um, in the, we'll say, 1700s. And, uh, and it, was, it was just another form of um, state-subsidized um, cronyism. Because it is one thing that, uh, you, know, you know, some people say, well, <clears throat> you know, if it wasn't for government, you know, you'd still have chain slavery because it was, it was Abraham Lincoln that uh, freed us, right, with the Emancipation Proclamation. He freed the slaves, right, the, the great emancipator. Um, uh, whereas, um, if you do a little bit more reading into history, you will discover that um, it was actually something that the state um, subsidized and supported, <clears throat> right? So. Um, because if you can imagine a slave owner having, let's say, 20 to 30 slaves, and let's say, you know, what, what really kept those slaves there, right? Um, because obviously 20 to 30 slaves cannot possibly be physically um, restrained by, you know, let's say one or two um, um, plantation owners or masters, right? So there has to be something in place um, to prevent those slaves from leaving, from escaping, right? So <clears throat> that's, that's where you got, you know, the, uh, the government um, allowed this entire operation to continue as long as it did in the United States. Actually, it, uh, it continued far longer in other, um, in other areas, including the Middle East, in, uh, in the, you know, the, uh, the trans-Saharan slave trade. Um, but... Um, <clears throat> But in the United States, um, you had bounty hunters, you know, so people who actually, uh, it was their duty, their job to catch runaway slaves, right? So, and of course they were, you know, they were working for the government. So, so you know, without them, without, without them catching and, and bringing the slaves back to their owners, you know, what really could keep this whole um, vicious and heinous institution together? there was not much, right? It was really, it was something that was supported, funded, subsidized by government, okay? Uh, just another um, crony institution that has gone by the wayside. Um, and if you were to ask um, any person today, you know, do you support slavery? Of course, nobody does because, because now it's all common knowledge. We all understand that it's an evil institution to own people, right? But how different is that from today, right? Where, if you think about what, what the concept of government is, right? Um, well, the, let's just break down the word government. Um, I believe it's Latin, governare, means control, right? Or to dominate, governare. And mente is mind. So, it's mind control. This is the word um, government. That's the, the derivation of the word government. So... So we have to realize that um, that control and and um, domination and extortion through those means is basically the means through which government is enabled. Um, the monopoly on violence, um, it's also called the monopoly on violence. So we, we have to realize that that it is only through these means that it's propagated, right? And along, also the myth of authority, right? This is. Um, um, that is inculcated through our um, government schooling and public indoctrination uh, years. <laughs> Which incidentally, uh, I believe it was Lenin, he said, uh, give me your children for four years and I will, I will plant a seed that will not be uprooted for the rest of their lives. Right? So he was, he was discussing, he was talking about um, the, the importance of, of public um, indoctrination as a means through which um, uh, to control the youth. One 
So public indoctrination as a means through which to control the youth because without a firm basis in, um, <clears throat> in obedience, in conformity, in, in um, belief in the myth of authority, there can really be no government, right? Um, because really, uh, you, you can say that the, the people are being robbed every day through taxation, right? Also called theft, right? Um, or expropriation. Uh, you can say that, you know, 300 million people are being robbed by, <clears throat> by the government, but when you put it into, into the context of numbers, right, you think of 300 million people being robbed by a few hundred or a thousand people, all of a sudden it becomes very illogical, and, um, and um, it's unlikely that that would continue if the people did not actually think it was necessary or believe government to be an, a, a vital institution for the maintenance of a civil society. Um, and that is um, primarily the great, well, no, I wouldn't say great, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the hideous result of 12 years um, in government schooling, right? Um, because they, they do not actually teach education, they don't teach information that's really worth, um, worthwhile. Right, because if they did, then uh, I assume that children, when they got out of 12 years of schooling, would be eligible for something a little bit more than a minimum wage job. And to think that um, if you if you were to spend 12 years doing anything, um, I would assume that you would be somewhat of a <clears throat> of an adept at whatever that field would be, <clears throat> right? So, <clears throat> so, so yeah, so, um, so, so really the, the idea of government is based on the myth of authority, obedience, conformity, as well as um, <clears throat> the theft of the property of others. And, and actually the assumption that, that people are property of others, that some people are entitled to something and that some people are the property of others and, and they, you know, their, their body is not their own, their health is not their own, <clears throat> the fruits of their labor is not their own. Um, and this uh, gives rise to things like the income tax, which, um, you know, it started in 1913 along with the creation of the Federal Reserve. Um, coincidence? I think not. Um, and... Um, and so the income tax essentially uh, assumes that 100% that of our income is government property and, and basically they can take whatever arbitrary percentage they want and, uh, and generously give, give the rest back to us as if there, there's some uh, magnanimous um, entity bestowing the gifts on the people. <laughs> um, so... So, 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 yeah, it's, um, it's, it's the, the concept that government implies theft of property, right? The violation of property rights. Uh, and, and that is the only way it can survive, right? It survives through taxation, through fiat currency creation or borrowing, right? Um, which is essentially borrowing against the property, or against the prosperity of the unborn, right? So using the unborn, the future, um, you know, grandchildren, great-grandchildren as collateral for um, continuing the party today, right? Um, this is essentially the, uh, the Federal Reserve's um, program with quantitative easing since 2008. Um, um, you know, the, the economy has been artificially stimulated since 2008 um, through fiat currency creation, massive, massive fiat currency creation, right? To put it into perspective, uh, from 1776 to about 2000, um, we could say 2006, um, just looking at the national debt, right? We have accumulated $7 billion, right? $7 billion, uh, yeah, uh, or um, I think eight billion, something like that, seven or eight billion dollars, and then Bernanke takes control of the helm, 
uh, 2006, and uh, by the time he, he left earlier this year, we have accumulated uh, $17 billion, right? So more than double <laughs> in, uh, in those short years from 2006, 7 to today, more than double the national debt as compared with uh, when, we, when it was first created, when, when uh, you know, our, the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution were written, the uh, Declaration of Independence. And looking at the base money, um, up until 2008, I think, I, I believe the, the M1 currency, the base, base currency that's in existence was about $800 billion up until uh, 2008. And then from 2008 to today, that has um, ballooned into um, about $4 trillion, okay? The Federal Reserve has printed $4 trillion, okay, in just six years, whereas what, the 230-some-odd years from 1776 to today, only $800 billion. So you can really see how um, this is just unprecedented times. We are living through uh, remarkable times and um, historically when this when governments have resorted to fiat currency printing there has not been favorable conclusions I have to say to put it lightly. Um, <laughs> and really what, what that leads to is uh, true chaos, um, true mayhem, ec um, you know upheaval, economic um, instability and uh, we, we would term an, an economic collapse or wealth transfer right um, so it's it's something that it, it, it's a it's a conclusion that cannot be avoided it can only be postponed it can only be delayed right all they're doing is kicking the can down the road right um, hoping that the next guy will deal with the problem the next guy will deal with the problem and this is basically the, uh, the attitude that we have regarding uh, fiscal responsibility. Right? The, the government has no fiscal responsibility. It is completely incapable of fiscal responsibility because, remember, the government is insolvent. It is a bankrupt institution um, because it has no money of its own at all. At all, right? The only way that it acquires its money is through theft. Theft of other people's property, which um, by that by that logic, it, it claims ownership of people's property, right? So people and and the reason it's theft is basically because people, you know, you know, you know, some people will say, "Well, I am happy to pay my taxes." Okay, some people may be happy to pay taxes, uh, misguided though they may be, they may be happy. But if there is even one person that's not happy, then it's theft. It's, it's, it's like, <clears throat> it's like um, you know, some women may like to be raped, but if there's some women that don't like to be raped, then it's rape and it's immoral and it shouldn't be done, right? So, so you know, it's not like, um, you know, they say, some people say, well, what, what if we abolish, if we abolish government, you know, who's going to build the roads? Who's going who's gonna to protect the, who's going to protect the country? You know, who's going to build the infrastructure? <laughs> which uh, is kind of missing the, the, the case because, you know, chain slavery is not immoral. Well, let's, we'll put it like this. Chain slavery is not, is not a bad, uh, is, is, uh, is wrong, is not wrong because, like, we don't know who's going to pick the cotton, right? Chain slavery is wrong because it's immoral to own other people. That's why it's wrong. It's it's an end the immorality is an end in itself <laughs> forget about the cotton somebody will pick the cotton we will find ways there are peaceful and voluntary ways to go about doing things without enslaving one group at the expense of another group okay which um, incidentally is essentially what democracy is all about right a lot of people say this is democracy you know we you know, people fought for our country, this is a democracy. You know, how dare you criticize? Well, we have to realize what democracy actually is, is mob rule, okay? It's, um, it's one group of people, the majority, um, imposing their will 
over the minority at the, at the expense of the minority. So it's a violation of individual rights is democracy. It's mob rule. It's like, it's a lynch mob. Okay, you know, um, people, if people, you know, some people say, well, we can't have, we need government because people are bad, cruel, you know, people are, um, have b bad base need, you know, they, they have uh, cruel intentions, people are evil, things like that. Well, well, if people on an individual, if, if you go along that logic, people on an individual level are cruel and evil and base, then what about in a mob? in a large group and voting. <laughs> Does that worsen the situation? I would tend to argue so. Um, and, and also, if people are not trusted, you know, if people are not trusted to make, you know, important decisions in their own life, you know, you know um, how can they be trusted to make important decisions in uh, politics? <laughs> Something important is politics, but, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, that's, I mean, it's also ridiculous because, you know, you, we're voting for one person or you know a select group of people and that's it you know you vote for them and then you have no say whatsoever in what they do um you know people say we have represent it's a representative democracy well <laughs> even that is a, a a pointless argument because um sure they represent us but uh they basically do what they want once they're elected they have no accountability okay they have no responsibility to please the people whatsoever okay they um, they do what they want, they say what they want, and there's little to no repercussions that they get. Um, and that's just the nature of democracy, right? Mob rule, right? So, so yeah, government is, at its base, at its core, theft of the property of others. <clears throat> okay? And so when someone says, I oppose the institution of government, what we're really saying is we oppose theft of the property of others. Also, we oppose the monopoly on violence. That's also what you can describe as government. Um, and that they have all the guns and um, no other entity can outgun or outchallenge a government in, in its geographical region known as a country. Right? So, but, but, it can, a government can only survive off of the theft, expropriation, and, or extortion of the property of others, right? So, so this is why um, I support voluntarism. This is why I support anarchy, although that word is a highly emotionally charged word. People have negative connotations, especially with that uh, ridiculous movie that's coming out. The Purge, anarchy. Um, but um, if you study the word anarchy and what it actually means, right? So you have oligarchy, which is a rule by a few, right? And you have monarchy, a rule by one, and you have anarchy, which is ruled by no one, right? So it means no, no rulers, but not no rules, right? Because there will always be rules, right? We always, you know, there's always laws that are not man-made, that um, we cannot break, they're inviolable. Um, and if you, if you break these, um, you, you will suffer natural consequences, not consequences like somebody's going to come to your door and lock you up. <laughs> but I'm talking about laws of gravity, laws of physics, laws of thermodynamics, you know, laws of mathematics, you know. These are laws that are universally applied to everybody, right? It's not, you know, it's not, um, applies to you know, applies to you, but doesn't apply to Ben over there, <laughs> or it applies to white people, doesn't apply to black people, or applies to, you know, everybody, the, you know, the common people, but doesn't apply to politicians. No. These are universally applied laws, okay? The, and they are, they are um, broken by no one without suffering um, consequences. That, and, by the way, um, also another, another um, aspect of government that is kind of reprehensible is the fact that um, <clears throat> unlike a private business, so a private business, um, you know, a person puts up enormous amount of risk, right? Right, putting you know capital and and buying equipment and and hiring employees and you know renting a space, let's say. And so there's an enormous, enormous amount of capital and risk that's that's put up in order to start a business, and so the success or failure of the business 
is entirely dependent on the person, the business owner, right? On his competence, on his um, ability to uh, learn from his mistakes and improve his business practices and thereby gain more um, customers or clients, right? On the other hand, government um, is a monopoly, right? So being a monopoly, it has um, no accountability. It, has, it, 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 it doesn't... It doesn't answer to the, you know, supply and demand doesn't answer to the price mechanism, doesn't answer to competition, right? Doesn't answer to any of that that a, a normal business would answer to. Therefore, it can acquire funds through theft of property, of, through taxation and fiat currency creation, which is theft of the prosperity of the unborn, right? Further impoverishing uh, the present. And... So it, it acquires these funds by force, by aggression, right? By extortion. And, and so it puts up no risk whatsoever, okay? So you can say that government or anything that is subsidized by government, like, you know, big oil, big agriculture, you know, big, big banks, you know, big uh, energy, um, you know, especially the state subsidized sports like football, baseball, basketball, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these things are uh, state subsidized and, and that's one of the reasons, you know, why these, these players make such exorbitant, exorbitant amounts of money and, you know, these associations, they um, are tax exempt or the stadiums are, don't pay any property taxes or, you know, things like that. <clears throat> um, so if they have a bad, you know, so, so basically, um, you know, so they can gather all this capital, but they take no risk. So if the government makes a mistake or any one of its cronies or any one of its, you know, um, subsidized um, entities make a mistake, the, the people pay for it, right? Through increased taxation, through austerity, right? Through more fiat currency creation. So... So the common people put up risk, get success, enjoy that, or fail, and they fail. They go bankrupt, right? The government extorts, steals, and robs from the productive middle class, and <laughs> and they you know create things and they say, look what we created, you know that, you know what, how would you have created the, you know the roads if it wasn't for us? How would you have created the stadium if it wasn't for us? How would you have created you know, let's say, go all the way back to Egypt. How would you create, have created the pyramid if it wasn't for us and slaves, you know? You see, how would you have done that? Again, this is the, this is the age-old um, broken window fallacy, right? The seen and the unseen, right? So, so all we see is what the government does, but what you don't see is the destruction, the theft, the, the robbery of, of the property of, of individuals, right? Um, so, so their success is ensured through their monopoly of violence, through theft and extortion. And if they make mistakes, their losses are, so, are um, socialized. So successes are privatized, losses are socialized throughout, right? So the people pay. So they say, um, so basically like, you, you know, talking about the bailouts on Wall Street, um, Right, so these big investment firms and, and, and banking, enormous uh, um, banking entities uh, intimately create, intimately um, involved in government, um, you know, did enormous uh, gambling, you know, derivatives uh, bets and, and lost trillions of dollars of, of taxpayer money, <laughs> trillions. And what happens? They get a bailout because... They're state subsidized. Such a wonderful thing to be state subsidized. You know, it's like uh, it's like you know you're you're walking on a bed of nails and you got people holding you as you're walking over the bed of nails. And you're like, you see, I'm walking over a bed of nails, <laughs> and the people are underneath that uh, you're trampling on that are um, that are being uh, mauled. <laughs> so. So basically, we can say government encourages um, evil, vicious, and contemptible behavior, right? No risk taking. Uh, they take no risks. And, um, 
and we all we see is you know what they do but we must look beyond that we must see what is destroyed we must see what's obliterated and annihilated as a result of the theft of the property of others all right so uh I'm going to end right there. That's, um, this is uh, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm um, wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care.